In this video I'm going to take a look at a zero dimension NumPy array in Python. Consider this computer program. You can see here I'm importing NumPy as MP. On this line I'm creating an integer and on this line I'm creating a NumPy array and I'm passing in the integer that was created on the previous line. And here I'm printing aspects of the integer and the NumPy array, the NumPy array. On the next slide, I'm going to consider this assignment statement here and look at it from an object-orientated viewpoint. This is the program statement I just referred to in the previous program, and we can see that the name I've chosen, my underscore integer, is assigned 7. Now the name my underscore integer is a reference to an integer object that has the value of 7. And we can visualize this with the following diagram. We know we're going to need a class and this class we can see is the integer class which is going to have attributes and methods. So when this program statement executes what we're going to get is an object based on this class and I'm showing that here and you can see that the object will have various methods and at its core here you can see I have the value of 7. So this is a diagrammatic representation of an object. Here's the class, this is the object and the object is based on the class. Now of course I must know where this object is in the computer's memory and therefore I need to know what its name is and of course if we look here we can see it's my underscore integer. So we can represent this on the diagram with a label and you can see that bouncing into position here where my underscore integer is the name on the label reflecting this name as it appeared in the computer program. But what we can see here, the object orientated viewpoint, is we have a class and this object is based on that class. So the methods this object has have been defined here in the class. Now I've covered this kind of thing in earlier videos and I'm just using it here because I think it is a sensible way to think about many Python programming statements because Python is an object oriented language for the most part. This program statement is taken from the program we looked at at the beginning of the video and you can see that it is going to create a NumPy array and I'm passing in the integer which obviously stores the value of 7. Now if we consider this from an object orientated viewpoint we know that my array which is the name I've given the array is going to be pointing to an instance of a class therefore we need to consider the class and the class is the numpy array class and we know it'll have attributes and methods and an instance of this class will be created as you can see here and this instance is obviously an object when we say an instance of a class is the same thing as an object and of course this object needs to be labeled and you can see I'm labeling it with the word my underscore array which is the name you can see here let's consider this snippet of the program and we know when the program does execute we're going to get what I refer to as an execution space and this is where all the objects will exist when the program is running. If I turn my attention to this program statement we know as we've already seen in the previous slides that this is going to produce an object of the integer class which you can see here and it's got the 7 stored at its core I've labeled it my underscore integer and we can see the various methods. If I now go and look at this program statement an instance of the ND array class is going to be produced and that is shown here and you can see at its core it's got the values 7 because that's the value I passed into it here when it was created. It's got the name my underscore array which is taken from here. So what you can see is we have two objects and the diagram is kind of useful but it doesn't tell us everything we need to know because if you look at these objects they look pretty much the same don't they? You see well, they've got methods and at the core you can see that they both have the value of 7 but what we need to 
remember and what we need to appreciate is that this object is based on the integer class and this object is based on the nd array class so these methods will be different to these methods here they might have similar methods but this one which is the nd array instance has lots of methods that are good for mathematical work which we'll be looking at as this playlist continues. But we can see that these two program statements give us these two objects. Let's return to this program statement again, which will create an instance of the ND array. And we know that when we create an instance, we're going to need a class. And this is the ND array class. And this will be responsible for defining what the object of this class will look like. And you can see the object appearing here. And of course, we would label it with the name I chose for the array in my code. So what you can see here is a diagram that represents an array, an instance of the ND array class. And look at this, it's seven. Now that looks to me like it's an integer. It doesn't look much like an array. But remember, this is a zero dimension array. So what we need to do is to ask ourselves, why is this an instance of the ND array class when this here doesn't look much like an array? Well, let's put it to one side and let's make sure we all agree as to what an array would typically look like in Python and in any programming language for that matter. It is often useful to represent an array with a diagram, and that diagram is shown here. And you can see we have a number of items, and these items are indexed, as you can see here, from 0 through to 4. Now, the array would have a name in a programming language, so I'm going to give it a name, and the name is simply an underscore array. If I therefore wanted to access one of the elements of the array, you would use this name together with a square bracket, and in the square bracket you would place the index value of the item. So if I was to consider this one here, you can see the name is an underscore array. You can see here I've got the square brackets and the one, and that would choose this item because it has the index of one. If I just choose another one, look at this one here, you can see the name is an underscore array with three. This is the index of three. So this would allow access to this item here, which has in this case the value of zero. So if we now look at this object and look here and say, well, does this look like what most people regard an array to be like? And the answer, well, no, it doesn't. But it is. That's the crucial thing about this. And it is because this is an instance of the ND array class. We know this will create an instance of the ND array class. And what I'm passing in here, in this case, is an integer, which is just one value. And when this happens, we're going to get an object of the ND array class, as illustrated by this diagram here. And what we need to focus on is this 7. Now, this 7 was passed in here to this method, which was used to create this object. And, of course, this object was based on this class. If we consider this, it may not look much like an array. But it is an array because the whole object is based on the ND array class. It is an instance of the ND array class, and this is what it would look like. Now, straight away, you look at that and you say, well, does this need an index? Is this index zero position, as we illustrated in the arrays that we looked at earlier? Now, I'm going to leave that to you to consider. See if you can print out the zero index position of this array and see what happens. But what we can say is that this is an example of a zero dimension ND array. And it just has the one value, as you can see in this example. There are no other elements. There are no other items in the array. There's just this. A zero dimension ND array is often called a scalar and they are used and the name suggests what they're used for. They can scale up or scale down other array values by using mathematical operations. But that's something, as I say, we'll be looking at in due course. 
This is the program I've been referring to throughout this video. Let's consider its runtime and you can see that appearing here. If we look to this line you can see I'm importing NumPy as MP. This line will create an integer object as we've already seen. This line will create a NumPy array which will take in the value of 7 at this point when it's created and this line is going to print my integer and the type of my integer so we can see when it prints my integer it prints 7 and when we print the type of my integer you can see it is indeed a class int so it's a type of integer it's an instance of the integer class if I come here and now I'm going to print my underscore array its contents you can see that that appears here as 7 and here I'm going to print the type of my underscore array and you can see that here and it's clearly telling us that it is an instance of the class nd array I now recommend that you enter this program into your editor and execute it to confirm that the output is as you can see here. Then I would suggest you amend the program by placing here the square brackets and an appropriate index and see if it works. Because remember what we've created on this line is an ND array that only has one element. Do you think it's therefore necessary to index this one element? Well, if you put a square bracket here and a zero in and see what you get at the runtime. You've seen that this program statement creates a zero dimension ND array often referred to as a scalar. Now it is the case that you will want to be producing scalars when you write your code. And you can see in this program I've created an integer here and then I've passed the variable to this method. Before I bring the video to an end I just want to show you a snippet of code that will create a zero dimension array, in other words a scalar. And that code is shown here. And if you look to this line this will create the scalar this will create the zero dimension array and how does this differ from this line well here you can see I passed in an integer variable whereas here I just passed in the value of the integer I wanted to appear in the zero dimension ND array so I've passed here a literal and if you look to this line what I'm now going to do is to print my underscore array and the type of the array and you will see the runtime here and you can see that indeed we have seven as the value and this is telling us that it is an instance of the ND array class. Please consider subscribing to the channel and click the bell to ensure you get an update every time I upload a video. Maybe you would like to consider supporting the development of these free videos via Patreon. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter and also check out the supporting website.